Welcome guys. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between a street car and a cup car. Um, I preferably, I like the cup car better um, just because it's a race car. And uh, I mean, you know, it just is like, it's so great. So you've done everything you can to make the most capable car to be the fastest it can be and dominate anybody else it goes up against. Well, how would it do on the track against an actual track car? Well, today we're gonna to be going over some of the key differences between a track car and a road car. We're also gonna get an inside look of what it's like to race in a legitimate series, wheel to wheel and for time. I'm Brandon Harton, and this is Riot Supply. Each session, it seems like we're burning an eighth tank. But what I'm, what I'm most focused on actually is the weight of the gas in the car. So each gallon is about six pounds. Our cars are classed on power to weight ratio. And so everyone is right up against the weight limit. After each session, we're going to impound over here and putting our cars on the scales. I was underweight uh, because I had no fuel left. I had 20 miles left in my tank. I was actually worried about running out of fuel on the track. Um, so I'm putting in about a half tank. I'm gonna put in 10 gallons, so 60 pounds. On Saturdays, when all the rural Nazis are gonna be out here with their measuring tapes and clipboards trying to DQ anyone with an infringement. my last time fellas I'm just trying to get the fuel load right gracias one of the most substantial differences you'll see with a road legal car is the interior it is infinitely more comfortable you can drive longer durations it's not nearly as hot you have air conditioning you can listen to music whereas a cup car you can't hear anything and you most likely need to wear ear protection because your hearing will be damaged. One of the other major differences that you'll notice is that it is substantially easier to get in and out of. Yeah, so got a little bit of a problem here, but we're fixing it. Um, the car's so fast. We didn't change anything else, just the motor and the rear plexiglass just blew out because there was so much force and energy and so much fast that it just <laughs> Yeah, per safety protocol bullshit, um, you have to have rear window, I don't, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, like honestly, you know, cooling, extra cooling. They're just trying to slow us down because they're so fast. Good. Outside from being some obvious differences such as overall appearance, there are some huge differences between the steering angle, the camber, and the alignment. So they're not as obvious on cars like this, but they're way more obvious on drift cars. So as you'll see here with the contact patches on the front tires, the negative camber on the wheel actually helps us with the trailing wheel um, while we're in the middle of a drift. So that negative camber will kind of lean itself back into the positive direction when you're in the middle of a drift, which gives you a lot better of a contact patch um, and helps you steer the car a lot better. Uh, so that is something that you'll see on all the cars out here. Um, the most important part really for these drift cars is the motor and the angle kit in the front. So you'll see a lot of guys running the blue Wisefab stuff that's up here, uh, or FDF is another big company here in the drift scene. That's pretty much it, it's a pretty straightforward car. The most important thing we wanna know about having all of these different setups is you're getting different weight distribution, you're getting different aerodynamics, you're also getting different contact patch on your tire. The difference between these two cars isn't as obvious when it comes to these angles, whenever you look at them head on, but whenever you look a little bit closer, it's a little bit more obvious. And this is our Violet Racing shirt, you should check it out. On another note, look at the amount of angle that actually is on that front tire. In the back here you'll notice that it's pretty lined up with the fender. The reason why it's important that the front tire has the most camber is so that whenever you are in 
a turn, you have the most contact on the front tire, meaning you are gonna have better traction and most likely better track times. Now, when we come over to this other side, you're gonna notice that this doesn't have near the camber that the cup car has. It's important that it has a little bit up front and you'll see that, but it's not nearly as important. Now, this is a car that is capable of going incredibly fast, so you'll notice that there is a little bit of camber on those front tires, but similar to the cup car, the rear doesn't have nearly as much camber and lines up pretty nicely with that fender. Now, let's get over to the actual steering angle. Um, race car, this is where your hands are. They never go from anywhere but here to here. So for the race car, that's all it's got. At the speeds, loads, and grip levels, you can get the car to rotate very much with just that much steering angle. Yeah, we're just sitting on grid for practice. So this will be our first practice of the day, and then I guess the only practice of the day, and then we're going right into a, a race later in the afternoon. So right now we're just, we're hanging out, taking a nap, waiting for a uh, grid to release. Struggling with balance a little bit. It's a little bit, a little bit more in the front. We just went over the video and made a couple decisions on setup. Gonna make some shock changes, gonna make a brake bias change. Just trying to move balance a little bit forward. Understeer, power down understeer. And it's a little bit snappy and low speed stuff. But just trying to find that comfort and balance and give the driver the confidence he needs to forget about the car and focus on the race. It's a game changer. Just the whole like emotion of the experience inside of a cup car, uh, the gearbox, straight cut gears whining in your ears is louder than the exhaust. And this car is straight piped. Um, and you can hear the gearbox whine over, uh, you know, the straight pipe, which is unbelievable. So just that immersive feeling and car experience. I've been a Porsche fan my whole life. Now that I'm able to kind of you know, have the experience of the street car on track versus the cup car. I mean, the, the street car is amazing. I personally think it's the best. And then when you go to a cup car, which is just the rawest version of that, it'll blow your mind. I mean, we expected a top three, um, or at least a fight for third. Um, Root and racing, they got the faster car, obviously, so they kind of walk away with first. So it's really a battle for second and third. Hopefully now you feel a little bit more confident in what the differences are between a track car and a road car. You may even notice that it's not as difficult to get into the racing scene as you might think. The barrier to entry isn't very high and it's not nearly as expensive as people make it out to be. There's a lot more details that I didn't go into that 
we plan to go into in the future, such as aerodynamics. That is a whole other beast and animal that we haven't even tackled. Let us know what you think. We have access to incredible people and incredible cars, and we want to help you see what it's like to be out on track and be able to have a lot of fun out here. I've been wearing different Riot Supply merch throughout this whole video, and you can get access by finding one of our Riot Supply ambassadors and get an access code. I'm Brandon Hart with Riot Supply. We'll see you next time. Just kidding. They won't let me drive this thing yet.